Hi, Chris Glynn here with the Nightlight Podcast. Most everybody in the world has heard about the Antichrist or the 666 Mark of the Beast. And now with the flood of every kind of satanic evil that's been unleashed upon the world, many people are asking, is now the time for this man of sin to be revealed? However, Bible prophecy clearly tells us that we'll not see the Antichrist until after we see a confederacy of 10 kings ruling in Europe or possibly the whole world. So who are these 10 kings? Well, we don't yet know, but we should look out for them because when they arise, we'll know that the reign of the Antichrist is soon to follow. Well, I've invited some Bible prophecy experts to give us their take on who these mysterious 10 kings might be. End time news and views. And on the show today, with me is Daniel Clark, host of the endtimesofficial.com website, and he's speaking to us from Queensland in Australia. Uh, thank you, Chris, for this opportunity to offer my input, along with others, uh, concerning the Ten Kings. And together, hopefully, we can uh, build a good case from balanced scripture to show how, when, and from where these Ten Kings shall arise. Daniel, I know that you have some very interesting insights as to who these Ten Kings might possibly be. So, where would you like to begin? Well, firstly, Chris, we need to remind ourselves that the Bible refers to empires as kingdoms and emperors and leaders as kings. This helps to see political leaders as kings and not merely as presidents or prime ministers, etc. Right, that's correct. Uh, furthermore, we learn from Daniel 2.44 that in the last days before Jesus returns, there shall be 10 kings or 10 political leaders governing the final one world government under the dictatorial leadership of the Antichrist. Right. Uh, these 10 kings are depicted as 10 toes in the image in Daniel chapter 2, but as 10 horns in other prophetic chapters throughout the books of Daniel and Revelation. The Bible even shows that today's global division of dictatorships and democracies is viewed as one kingdom in the eyes of God. That's uh, today's global kingdom is depicted as the iron and the clay in the feet of the Daniel 2 image. Uh, the iron fist dictatorships and the clay people elected democracies. And this will soon morph into the global or new world order that shall have 10 kings as depicted uh, by the 10 toes in the Daniel 2 image. Right, and how can we be sure that that's the correct interpretation? A good question, Chris, and a good question deserves a satisfactory answer, and the answer is found in Revelation 17.10, where John is shown a vision and was told that the seven mountains represent seven kings, uh, the kings of the seven kingdoms that relate directly to God's people and to end-time prophecy, with the seventh kingdom being today's global division of dictatorships and democracies. And what are those seven kingdoms? We understand from prophecy and from history and from balanced scripture that these seven kingdoms are Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia and Greece. That's five. And the sixth was Rome, uh, the current one is kingdom in John's day, with the one is to come kingdom in that passage being today's global kingdom of dictatorships and democracies that shall morph into the soon uh, coming short-lived eighth kingdom of the new world order, the Antichrist's final one world government, the new world order. And Daniel, just let me read that passage that you're referring to in Revelation 17 so people can see the scripture on the screen. This is Revelation 17, verse 9 through 13. Here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, and there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And the beast, of course, is referring to the Antichrist. Shining bright in the dark night, you're listening to Nightlight.
Well, now we get into the very interesting part of the topic of our discussion concerning the ten kings who shall be ruling the new world order. Yes, and what's your understanding of these prophecies? Well, firstly, I'll read what Scripture has to say, with my commentary added as food for thought. Good. Uh, Daniel 2.42 reads, And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Uh, Chris, as I've explained earlier, this is speaking about the current global division of dictatorships and democracies, partly strong and partly broken. Partly broken could be referring to the bipartisan forms of democratic governments. Right. This seems to indicate that there shall still be dictatorships and democracies that form the final new world order. That's true. And then the prophecy continues, and it focuses on certain characteristics of the ten kings who shall be ruling the new world order. Daniel 2.43 says, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Very interesting words that need to, we need to pay attention to. Uh, and then it goes on. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. This passage is very revealing because it seems to indicate that the ten kings will not be able to interbreed with humans, which gives rise to a possibility that I'll address in a moment. And finally, Daniel 2.44 reads... And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. I'll stop here at this point uh, and point out that the prophecy foretells that Jesus shall return in the days of these kings. In other words, in the days of these, the final one world government is when Jesus is going to return. Yes, I agree. The prophecy that Jesus will return in the days of the Ten Kings couldn't be any clearer. But what's not clear is how or when or how soon we'll see these Ten Kings revealed. Well, Chris, uh, to begin, we must brush aside any misunderstanding that we have and so that we've got a firm foundation of truth regarding how, when and from where the Ten Kings shall arrive. Uh, it's long been thought and taught that the ten kings shall arise out of the old Roman Empire or kingdom. That's right. Which is basically Europe today or the EU. However, Daniel chapter 7 offers a better understanding of when and from where the ten kings shall arise. I'll read the relevant passage in a moment uh, that'll explain how the European kingdoms that arose out of Rome went out and devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue of Roman culture throughout the whole earth through colonization. That's right. And out of this kingdom, meaning out of the whole earth, shall arise ten kings. Uh, the kingdoms of England, Spain, Portugal, France, Germany and the Netherlands and others, they all went out and devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue of Roman influence and culture throughout the whole earth. That's right. And Daniel 7.24, I think it is, Daniel 7.24 says that out of this kingdom, meaning out of the whole earth, is where the ten kings shall arise, not out of Europe and not out of the papacy and not out of some alliance of Islamic countries, as some propose, but out of the whole earth. That's what balanced scripture reveals. And Daniel, can you read the passage of Scripture that you're referring to from where you gain this understanding? Uh, sure. Uh, in Daniel 7, 7, it reads, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. Uh, there's the iron which relates to Rome in the Daniel 2 image. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Uh, Chris, the, uh, this fourth beast was diverse from the other beasts that were before it in various ways, but mainly it devoured the whole earth through colonization. Uh, this understanding is confirmed in the Daniel seven twenty three and 24 passage that reads, Thus he said, this is the angel Gabriel explaining to Daniel the meaning of the vision, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Now, as the passage continues, we learn that the Antichrist arises after the ten kings are ruling the new world order. Daniel 7.24 reads, 
And the ten kings out of this kingdom, meaning out of the whole earth, are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. This is speaking about the Antichrist who shall arise after the ten kings are in place and ruling the new world order. And he, the Antichrist, shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, Prophecy explains how Rome went out and devoured the whole earth and broke it in pieces and stamped the residue of Roman culture throughout the whole earth to where it can still be seen today in many forms, such as in architecture and road building and and in law and government, etc. Okay, Daniel, well, that passage explains clearly that the ten kings will rise first and then the Antichrist will subdue three of them. You've given us your interpretation of where the ten kings shall arise from, but how do you think they shall be revealed and when? Well, as to how and when, I keep in mind what the globalist David Rockefeller said in a 1994 speech to the United Nations. He said... All we need is the right major crisis to cause the nations of the world to accept the new world order. And what kind of crisis do you think David Rockefeller was referring to? It has long been the goal of the globalists to cause the nations of the world to comply to their dictates, either by cooperation or coercion. Uh, We saw this happen to some degree during the COVID crisis. That's right. But as terrible as that was, it was not enough to cause all the nations to accept a new form of global government. Oh, true, Chris. But rather, I'm talking about the kind of event that could see all the governments of the world, including China and North Korea and Islamic countries, come to a point where they will be forced to accept to comply with the agenda of the predicted new world order. Now, I'm going to present one possibility that aligns with prophecy and that shows how the globalists might obtain their goal, which is to have all the governments of the world surrender their sovereignty and comply with the global form of a one world government. Uh, I remember President Ronald Reagan's speech to the United Nations in which he drew the scenario of how quickly our world would change if we were faced with a threat from without our world, meaning events that appeared like or were made to appear like an alien invasion, an Orson Welles kind of war of the worlds kind of a scenario. Right. Today, we have the technology whereby the globalists who are unwavering in their ambitions to fully implement their form of a global government may deceive the, all the governments of the world into accepting a new form of global government with a governing council of 10 kings, just like prophecy predicts. Now, perhaps this is what the Bible is predicting, a one world government headed by 10 kings that the world thinks are aliens from across the galaxy. Wow, aliens. Yeah, well, that's an out-of-the-box scenario, but I agree with all the UFO sightings and disclosures. It is a possibility. And, And what sort of crisis do you think could bring about such a scenario, Daniel? Well, perhaps the uh, the threat of nuclear annihilation of the whole planet. Chris, what I'm going to present now might seem like wild fantasy at first, but I'm going to prove this possibility right from the Word of God, right from the Bible. Okay. Now, what if the planet was faced with the appearance of nuclear annihilation? What if there was such an escalation of danger? Wouldn't that be the ideal opportunity for the globalists to bring on their appearance of an alien invasion to save the planet? It doesn't need to be a real threat, only a perceived threat from the globalists to accomplish their goal. Then just imagine an alien delegation presenting itself to humankind, claiming that they had placed us here on this planet millions of years ago, and now they have come to save us from ourselves, from nuclear annihilation. Uh, Wouldn't that go along well with the theory of evolution and the constant bombardment we are subjected to by claiming that there is alien life somewhere across the galaxy? And what if such a delegation then demanded that all the governments of the world become subject to their rule handed down through 10 kings? Or if their country didn't comply, that their country would be eliminated by fire from the sky so that the rest of the planet could be saved. Daniel, some people would say that you have a Hollywood-style imagination, but there are others who have proposed this same possible scenario. 
Can you back it up from the Bible? Chris, I'm not interested in pie in the sky fantasy. First Thessalonians 5.21 says to prove all things. And one thing we can prove from the Bible is that the 10 kings who shall be ruled in the soon coming new world order will not be able to interbreed with humans. So, Daniel, you're referring to Daniel uh, 2.43, which says, And they, referring to the ten kings, shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to one another. And you're saying that that could mean that they won't be able to interbreed with humans. Perhaps they'll be transhuman. What are your thoughts on that? Chris, technology and artificial intelligence have progressed far beyond what we are allowed to understand. So yes, there is every possibility that the 10 kings could be AI or more likely demons from another dimension, interdimensional beings, but not from another galaxy, not intergalactic. Although this is how the globalists would choose to present them to us as aliens from across the galaxy. However, in reality, they would be demons taking on some form of a physical uh, human appearance. Nightlight, keeping you in tune with the times. Daniel, there's one thing that puzzles me. You gave your reasons why you think that the Ten Kings could be presented to the world as, in quotes, aliens from across the galaxy. But then on the other hand, you gave scriptures to show that they will arise out of the whole earth. Yes, I can see how that might appear to be a contradiction in terms. But there is another possibility that we need to consider. What if the world was told that the aliens have been amongst us all the time, coming and going across the globe and posing as humans? Uh, I don't want to be too speculative, but the, this idea is not beyond possibility and would answer a lot of our questions. Yes, well, on this show, we're exploring possibilities that do have a biblical foundation. We're not presenting doctrine. We're discussing scriptural possibilities, and we just have to wait to see what the actual fulfillment will be. Uh, in Daniel 14, 29, Jesus said that he tells us these things before they happen so that when they happen, we might believe. Right. And Daniel chapter 7 tells us that the 10 kings shall arise out of the whole earth. And Daniel chapter 2 seems to tell us that these 10 kings shall be unable to interbreed with humans. It does. And furthermore, balance... Prophecy tells us that the Antichrist shall arise after the ten kings are in place and ruling the new world order. That's important. Uh, and that after he is revealed, he shall somehow need to subdue three of the ten kings until they all give their allegiance to him as the supreme leader of the new world order, at which time the Antichrist shall then give them power to rule with him as kings. These prophetic predictions are found in Daniel seven twenty three and 24 and Revelation seventeen twelve and 13. Lighting your path through the end times. You're with Nightlight. And thank you, Daniel, for your contribution to this program in which we've been discussing the 10 kings that the Bible says will be ruling over the governments of the world in the day when Jesus will come again, as foretold in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And listeners, if you'd like to know more about Bible prophecy and end time events, then I'd suggest that you go to Daniel's YouTube channel, which is simply titled Jesus Explains. And Daniel also has a website called endtimesofficial.com. I'll put the links below. Well, thank you, Chris, and I look forward to uh, chatting again soon. Well, that's a little shorter show than usual, but it's given you plenty to digest and also comment on if you have any ideas of who the Ten Kings may be. This is Chris signing off and looking forward to being back again with you next time for another Nightlight podcast. Bye for now. 